So, I, I found myself thinking about plot twists in general, and I think I figured out a way to kind of talk about my broad philosophical thoughts on them uh, without having to give away any of the um, revelations or plot twists in my own book. Uh, so, the first thing I want to say is, don't take my breakdown of this to be me presuming to say, I am the master of twists, I'm going to blow your mind. I don't claim to be, I don't have that kind of ego about my own work. But having gotten the reaction that I have to some of the revelations in the book, for the most part, it seems to have landed well and worked with people. And I kind of tried to reverse engineer a little bit like, okay, how did this... It, it, assuming that it played the way I wanted it to, how did it work? And more to the point, what are some of the things where a twist doesn't work? And the thing is, as much as you might think, oh, it's going to be super circumstantial, it's going to depend on the context, change the context, you change whether the twist works, like, that's only in the details. I think, broadly speaking, whether or not a twist works comes down to one thing and one thing only, and that thing being, it's one of two options. And it has to do with whether the twist is explaining or reframing. So, for me, and my experiences as a viewer, reader, whatever, twists that don't work have a very strong correlation with being used in a way where you could tell from the beginning that there was going to be a twist because there's way too much that just does not make sense at all. So there has to be some kind of twist or surprise explanation coming because right now, way too many things don't make sense. Now this can be anything from, well, our hero's got amnesia, so that's like, that's a huge twist marker right there. Or we don't totally understand the motivations of the villains or why they're doing what they're doing. Or maybe just flat out the situation that the uh, protagonist finds themselves in doesn't make a total bunch of sense. Like there's something weird, something is wrong. So we're clearly missing information. If you signpost to your audience the fact that there is information they don't have, well, for one thing, they know a twist is coming because you have to give them the information at some point. And that is, and if you didn't give it to them early on, then that is always going to be played as some kind of twist. So that is going to increase the likelihood that your audience is going to get ahead of you and get ahead of the twist and or think of twists that they like better than what you actually ended up doing recent example of this, honestly, is kind of WandaVision, which for the most part I did like, but there's a lot of folks who felt disappointed by the tail end. And one of the reasons, I did a whole video on that, for at least for my reasons why I thought it was kind of disappointing, and those are separate from what I'm going to talk about now. But at least part of the reason that some people were disappointed was the fact that the show was built in a way that, okay, this doesn't make sense. And so theorists went nuts, which meant a bunch of people got ahead of some of the twists and came up with ideas that they liked better and then were disappointed by what they actually got. When you signpost there is going to be a twist, which all you have to do to do that is have a significant part of your story not make sense unless you're missing information, well then when that information is granted, that's the twist. So something like WandaVision, it's evident immediately we're in a sitcom starring two Avengers. Okay, that's not right. Something's weird, and I don't know what. I don't know why. And later I will find out, and there's your twists. And that's always a really tough thing to do. And my personal number one example for doing this horrifically badly is a movie called Identity, which I have no problem spoiling because it's crap. But it is a movie that builds up a lot of tension around it's it tries to initially present itself as this sort of and then there were none scenario bunch of people coming together in this space they start dying and there's a lot of weird coincidences about like i think they all have the same birthday and there's some other stuff i can't even remember all of it but like there's all this stuff going on and like something very strange has to be going on because there's no way this is all coincidentally happening and then the explanation is actually these are all 
multiple sides of someone with multiple personality disorder and the entire thing's happening in that guy's head. It's really, really dumb. Anyone watching it is going to be trying to figure out what is the twist. And one of the one of the other problems with when you signpost there's clearly going to be a twist is that if audiences do get ahead of you, some writers will then try so hard to go, ah, bet you didn't think of this, that they come up with something as stupid as multiple sides of somebody's personality killing each other in his own head. Which, I'm sorry, is really dumb. Uh, see the movie if you want to see how bad it is. I don't recommend it, though. So, if that's where twists tend to fail, where do they succeed? Well, they succeed... When you don't know there is going to be a twist, when something that is revealed isn't filling in a gap that you knew was there, but instead recontextualizes information that was largely based on your assumptions. So there's still a way to mess this up, which is to have the narrative flat out lie to you and then reveal later, ha ha, I, I lied to you, it's actually this, which I think is just cheap. Don't lie to your audience. But there is a lot of validity in playing into what the audience's likely assumptions are. The Sixth Sense is a perfect example of this. I don't think I have to worry about spoiling that. It's like one of the quintessential twists at this point. But part of the reason that the reveal that Bruce Willis's character was dead the whole time lands as well as it does is because there's a bunch of scenes of him in the room with people aside from Haley Joel Osment, uh, but they don't react to him or truly speak to him directly. They, If they say anything, it's something that makes sense for them to have said if nobody was there. So what that means is the audience, when they see these things initially, make an assumption that people can see him and are interacting with him. But when you get to the end and realize he's been dead ever since the end of the first scene, that recontextualizes everything. And suddenly you realize that the movie didn't have to lie to you. You made a bunch of assumptions, reasonable ones, that were wrong. And now that you have new information, it's recontextualized. Similarly with Darth Vader, because there is context, there is an internal logic before you know he's Luke Skywalker's father for why he is the bad guy, has a beef with Obi-Wan Kenobi, is tracking down anyone who might have who might have learned anything from a from a Jedi. You know, he's got you know, being pushed by the Emperor to do this stuff. He has his background as having been Obi-Wan's apprentice. We've got we've got enough information to make a lot of personal logical leaps for why he is the way he is. And finding out that he's Luke's father recontextualizes a bunch of that, but does not require that you didn't, you were going through, well, I don't understand anything about this character. Oh, now I get it. Well, clearly there was a twist coming, so whatever. But instead, you suddenly look back at everything with him prior to that through a new lens. And I think ultimately, that's the best way to execute a twist, is not, like, the worst way to do it, again, is to simply withhold information and have it be very clear to the audience that you are withholding information. I'm not going to say there's no way to make that work. There are some genres like, say, spy and noir style genres where having a character with some amount of amnesia, it's tropey, but it feeds into a lot of what those genres tend to be about thematically. So you can kind of get away with it, but it's still obvious that there's going to be a twist at some point. But by and large, signposting, hey audience, there's information that I'm keeping from you, probably a bad idea. And even if you're not going to do it that way and it's going to be a case of, oh, well, they're going to think this and then I'll reveal it's actually this, avoid lying to them about what it is and let it be built off their assumptions, their reasonable assumptions, and then pull the rug out for them later and realize the fact that they thought something else was their own fault, not because you lied to them. Because that's how you get twists that people can be resentful of. Uh, so I think that's about it. Twists and uh, doing them in narratives. My thoughts on it. Again, not claiming to be an expert. I don't know how well my twists actually work. I think they did. I don't know though. But I have my thoughts on it. Wanted to share them. 
What are your thoughts? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. I have a Patreon link in the description or maybe up there if they finally fix the freaking thing on this site. But uh, in any case, that helps me out greatly, but you don't have to. The usual stuff like share, subscribe helps me out too, but you don't even have to do that. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can just come on back next time you need a break.